Hello and welcome to a video tutorial on how to use 7-Zip File Archiver to encrypt and protect your files. This video is referencing a PC. If you need help on your Macintosh computer, there is another video that uses a program called Kika, and that will help to encrypt your files and help to view those files that were created by 7-Zip. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is go to 7-zip.org and you are going to need to go to download them from one of these two links. One will be a 32-bit and one is a 64-bit. You most likely have a 64-bit computer, but um, if you click on the wrong one, it just will air out and you'll install the other one. So you got to have about a 50-50 shot, so there you go. So once you download that, and and I will point out that if you go in the download section uh, for Macintosh computers, there is a 7-zip version for Mac, so you can use a 7-zip version. There is uh, no video tutorial for that, but there is one for Kika right underneath here. That's just the one I recommend. It has a little bit better user interface. Okay, once we have 7-zip downloaded and installed, it will look like this right here, and this is just on the desktop. I just created a shortcut here. If you would double click on this, this is what the program looks like. So what 7-Zip does is it will allow you to create an archive um, that you can put one or many files into that single archive, and then you can also encrypt that file so you can protect it with a password. Now this type of encryption is typically known as a trust no one encryption. Uh, there is a public key encryption that a video that is on the um, CNED YouTube channel and that kind of explains what that's about but this is about trust no one encryption so basically if you lose that uh, password you won't be able to recover that at all and there's no backdoor uh, type of password or recovery key you can get to unlock that file so once it's once we forgot the password it's gone but since you'll have a class password then there'll be a bunch of people who have that same password now there's always a risk with that because of course if if somebody tells somebody else then it's unprotected so just make sure that the password is um, is protected so now there are a couple options as I'm going through here and you can kind of explore that on your own but uh, such as in this area here is just a navigation area so if we go into my computer you can go into uh, the root of your your C drive, that's the root of Windows, and explore to specific files, and you can select those files and then add them to an archive and encrypt them. You can also navigate to the D drive here or uh, your uh, flash drive. You'll know because it'll say removable under type. So this is just going to navigate to some of your files that you want to create an archive from those files that you select in there. Now, if we go to our flash drive and look at this folder right here, this was created from the lab computers. And if I double click in there, these are all the files that were exported since I, I selected both of those options to export the media player format as well and the smart client player format. Now, this is already encrypted here. So when I click on that, and the file opens. Any day, okay. The password box will come up, and if I don't know the password, I won't be able to open it up. So there is no need to encrypt that. That's just redundant, so no, no, it's not necessary. So those files there, you don't have to worry about. That's the only folder we need to worry about, and that's the media player folder. When you're gonna find the media player format folder, you're gonna right click on that. There's gonna be option in there after you install 7-zip. If you hover over 7-zip, and then you go to where it says add to archive, click on that. And then this familiar box will pop up asking you several questions. You can keep pretty much everything the same here. Make sure the archive format is 7-z. You can do, um, I would just say fastest uh, compression level. We're not going to really worry about that. But you can compress files and make them smaller if you wish. Um, the rest of this can be the same. And then you enter the password here in under encryption. So 
enter the class password. Hopefully it's a complex enough password so no one can just randomly guess it. Alphanumeric, at least eight letters long with a special character, I'd recommend. Now one of the options you can do is you can select delete files after compression. So what that is going to do is, let's say, actually we didn't click that, and we're going to go ahead and say OK and encrypt the file. So we have that here. We can give this to our classmates and we can give this to our professors and they will be able to open it as long as they have 7-zip installed on their computer. Note that it is installed on all the lab computers so you don't need to worry about that. If you use go on a computer that doesn't have it, you can install a portable version of that and there is a guide on the website that shows you how to use that. So if you don't check that box, it's going to leave that media player format folder behind and I guess the only reason to uncheck that is in case you forget the password, you will have that file you know, just in case you forget it, but then you kind of lost the point of uh, encrypting and protecting the file. So we'll actually want to, uh, let's delete that real quick. So we're going to encrypt this again, right click that, go over 7-zip, add to archive, so you kind of do the same thing, enter the password, Click delete files after compression this time, and everything should be good. AES-256, that's a really strong encryption. Now let's see, if we, now encrypt file names is kind of interesting. If someone tried to, well, let's say if everyone, ha if there was a list of file names and those file names were sensitive, maybe two or three files were contained in an archive, and you didn't want people to see that, if you click that box, then you they wouldn't even be able to see it without entering the password first. So once we created that archive, see how that deleted that media player format folder, or file folder. And if we double click in that, it's going to show you everything that's in there. You can see all the file names. Um, that's because we didn't select the encrypt file names, but if we did, you wouldn't be able to see that. You would have to enter the password first. Now, since we didn't check it, you can see the file names, but when you try to export it to see the files, then it will still ask for the password there. But something to note is if you enter that password once, as long as you keep that box open, you won't have to enter that password again when you double click on it. If you export files out of that, um, or I'm sorry, if you close this box, and then you open it back up, you'll have to re-enter that password. So see how we can just open that back up without entering the password, as long as we left that window open. I'm going to create a new file here. New file, secret file name, there we go. And then just put some random data in here, save it. And then I'll encrypt it the same process as before. And also keep in mind to encrypt your SERP forms as well. So, so we're going to delete that file after compression. We're going to enter the password here. And now let's encrypt the file names just to show you what that what that looks like. So see, it deleted that file. Right, let's double click on that. It's going to ask for the password right away so you don't see any of the file names at all. Sometimes that's important, especially if those file names ha had some confidential information. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you're giving a flash drive with a 7-zip or a 7z encrypted file, what you're going to need to do, say this is the one that the um, your classmate gave you. You plug in the flash drive. You open up the flash drive. And we can just double click in there. And we enter the password here. Just like we did before, it will uncompress it. You can view the file right there. Not a problem. Now it will open it with whatever can read that AVI file. So normally VLC player or media player format or media player, Windows Media Player will be able to see those files. Now if you did encrypt the client files, auto run and smart client player, um, you'll need to export all those together. Otherwise, you can't just double click on that in there and it, it won't open up. It'll give you an, a, run, a runtime error. You would, If you did that, you would need to extract that into the desktop or something. And then you would be able to view the files. 
the only downside of this is that you are going to have to delete that file on that person on your desktop uh, to you know to make sure that it's uh, not seen by anybody and it's protected but the problem is if you just delete it that's fine but there are a lot of programs out there that will be able to uh, undelete the files and uh, recover those files even if you delete that because technically when you delete something it doesn't always technically delete that file forever um, it just tells the hard drive that hey there is some space on here that you can write data to and we won't uh, try to protect that data so so it just kind of gives it a, it just gives it a check mark box that's saying yes you can write to this area on the hard drive but if you if nothing wrote to that part of the hard drive then somebody could use a program um, that would undelete those files and they could potentially see that on your computer or a virus or something could see data on your computer that you have deleted so you have to get a program that will shred that uh, so something like the file shredder does that it protects protects you from those programs that can undelete something now this is for free this is at fileshredder.org and I've used this for some time and it does work really well so if you are going to be dragging any sensitive data onto your desktop, uh, make sure that you install something similar to File Shredder, or I would just recommend File Shredder since it's free. But this is how you usually open up. You drag the file to it like that, and then shred the files. Now, yeah, OK, it's going to go ahead and delete it off your computer. It's not going to be in your recycling bin. It's gone. And most likely, uh, they won't be able to get that back. Now, if they did somehow, I, maybe there's some way to do it, and I'm sure there's probably some way to do it, but we've made every reasonable attempt and precaution to prevent that from happening. So, so I'm not sure if there's a file shredder program for Macs or not, but you can check on that. All right, so hopefully that helps understand how to encrypt files and decrypt files with 7-Zip File Manager. Again, if you have any questions, please ask your professors, your GAs, or any of the technically savvy people that are in your program for additional help and advice.